MASL fans and lovers of indoor soccer. Welcome back to another edition of MASL Insider, telling you stories and introducing you to players that make up our beautiful sports. My name is Christian Philly Philemon, and today I am joined by a man who doesn't really need an introduction. The reason for that is because he's one of the best known keepers in the history of this league and the history of this sport. Our guest recently crossed the 100 win marks in the Major Arena Soccer League. He's had over 1,635 saves. He still holds the single season goals against average record of 2.87, which he set back in 2015. 2015 MASL Goalkeeper of the Year, 2017 MASL Championship MVP, four championship rings with the Baltimore Blast, and one with the San Diego Soccers. Currently, he is number two in the goals against average this season, number one in save percentage at .772, and he was also recently named Week 12 Defensive Player of the Week. And somehow, in all this time that he has, he manages to run his own goalkeeper academy called Born to Fly, and he's the goalkeeper coach at John Hopkins. There's so much more to say, but I hope you get the idea that we are talking to a living legend in this league and in this sport. And that I'm talking about is we've got William Vanzella on MASL Insider. Welcome, William. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm very happy to be chatting with you today. So thanks for the, for the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to say uh, I may be a little early, Maybe the first person to say this, but first and foremost, happy birthday. You're going to be celebrating a birthday on March the 1st. What are your festivities looking like for this year? Yeah, thank you. Um, not much. It's just another day. Um, just trying to spend, you know, with my teammates tomorrow morning doing training. And obviously throughout the day, answer messages, try to, to get to send a back message to everybody. And it's just another day, but I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, of course. And we'll be celebrating you here in Southern California. I promise you I will raise a glass, perhaps two, on, in your honor. Yeah, I hope it's not one per year of my birthday. Then you're going to be pretty drunk. <laughs> I don't know if I'd even be able to make it halfway through. Let's just put it that way. I probably should. My doctor would tell me I shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, he probably would tell you no. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I managed to catch both the Blast games this weekend. I mean, I haven't really missed any games in the league, period. But um, I think it's safe to say that a lot of Blast fans missed you. And I'm sure they're wondering how you're doing and how you're feeling. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay. And, you know, I'm very sorry that I had to miss this weekend. Uh, I'm dealing with a back injury that I it's not nothing new. It's just I have to manage that. And um, some weeks are much better than others. Um, and a quick turnaround in two games and playing in Harrisburg, which is not very helpful for your back. The surface is really hard. And then, you know, driving to play the next day in less than 24 hours is, um, I think, would uh, be too much. Um, so talking with coaching staff and, uh, and our trainer, um, we decided it was better to take a little bit of uh, time off and... Uh, Hopefully, I'll be back. I will be back this Friday. All right. Looking forward to it. Don't take too much time off because obviously there's, uh, there's playoffs on the horizon. And I know your fans and everybody in the league wants to see you back there in between the pipes. I appreciate that. You know, I don't want to take any days off. So it's just uh, as you get older, you have to start to manage your body. And, you know, throughout my years playing goalie here, I had seasons that I played every single game. Most of the seasons I played, you know, 20 out of 24 games or, you know, just, but um, you get to a point when you, you have to recognize what you have. And I do have a pretty serious problem on my back. So <laughs> it's not very light to play indoor soccer and go and be healthy there. So I'm uh, trying to, again, it's uh, it's management. So um, I'll be good for this week and I'll be good for playoffs for sure. Well, certainly keep an eye on that. And I mean, you said it, you've had quite a career. We're going to talk about that momentarily. There's so many interesting things to bring up with you because you've had a, a, an interesting upbringing. And, and I like to get to know people from the very beginning. Like, Talk to us about what childhood was like growing up in Brazil. Yeah. Um, so I have two sisters, a younger sister and older sister. I play soccer since I was four or I can remember. Um, in Brazil, is uh, I was a field player until I've came to a conclusion that I did not like to run. So <laughs> I was like, what's left for me in this game? It has to be a goalie. Um, you know, so then uh, one day, actually, um, 
the goalkeeper on my team got in a car accident, nothing major, but he couldn't make to the game and we needed a keeper. It was the semifinal game and my coach was like, who wants to be a goalie? And I was like, ah, I'll do it. I don't have to run. It's pretty cool. Uh, so he said, I, I don't remember. I was really young, but <clears throat> uh, he said that was really, I played really well and I should be, I was talented enough to just, you know, be the best keeper around. So I had to spend time and I had a future ahead. So I said, okay. So then I became full-time keeper. In Brazil, you don't have this part-time play goalie, play field. It's like I was a full-time keeper. When I was 13, I was invited to a tryout for an academy team. And um, I made it. And that academy was about five hours away from my family um, house. So I had to leave by myself. So I was living in the dorms underneath of the stadium since I was 13. Uh, we had morning practice. I uh, had afternoon practice and we were going to school from seven to midnight <clears throat> every day. Um, and that was my, you know, my beginning. Um, then we did face some family uh, money issues and um, I started to get paid uh, to, to be there because I had to provide for my family and uh, being provided for my family ever since. Um, and to me, that was the big difference. Uh, that I didn't have a choice in in every training session to me was a it was a championship game where I had to perform because I was you know I was responsible for a family of four at the age of 13 and that's probably why I grow I I, I like to say that I grow up much earlier than anybody else because not every, anybody else but the majority of the people because of that so I had to make wisely decisions with my money I didn't have enough money so I had to send my money to my family so you, you have the money, but you got to give it away. You know, you have to learn, learn how to do laundry. You have to learn how to cook and all of that. So, you know, it was an interesting process. I was there until I, was, I went to the pro level. Then I went to Italy for seven years. Um, I'm doing citizenship. I played in Italy for seven years. And then I came here 2012 um, to the Baltimore Blast. It's funny you mentioned doing laundry. At 16, I had no clue how to do my laundry. I was probably still wearing Velcro sneakers just because I didn't know how to tie my shoes. But yet at 16, you did turn professional. And I obviously, you were doing it with a different bit of motivation than most people would have at that age. But I got to imagine from an accomplishment perspective, like how did that feel playing in your first match professionally? Yeah, I think it's a process, but you really settle down that this is a job and it's it's very different, you know, even if you still love the game. And I, I still love this game, indoor, outdoor, futsal, you name it, soccer, um, since I was a kid. So I tried to enjoy it. It doesn't look when I play because you can always see I'm always yelling and, and, and try to give instructions, but that's part of goalkeeper's life. I enjoy this so much and that's why I continue to play. But player first game was just like, clicking for you okay this is really happening i'm i'm actually going to accomplish what i dreamed and it, that's i think is just the bottom line when you're like it's not a dream anymore it's it's right here in front of me so that was yes it was pretty cool yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're part of a very small percentage of people that are actually living their dream. I mean, essentially, you can argue that you're not really working because you're living your dream, which I admire the heck out of. So kudos to you on that. Um, you touched on this. You have dual citizenship and uh, you brought, bring up Italy. You actually played and represented Italy, ironically enough, in Brazil in 2011, the 7v7 Mund <laughs> Mundialito. Like, how yeah. did that opportunity come up? And with dual citizenship, what made you choose Italy versus Brazil? It's uh, so the competition, I think, you know, um, to play for Brazil was much tougher. And plus, I, I was playing in Italy. So they watch game by game so they can see me every week. So it was much easier for them to give me an opportunity, I, I, would, I would think, you know. I, and that's probably why this happened. And uh, that was... Uh, it was awesome. At the end of the day, you know, it's your job. You have to do the best way you can, and that gives you exposure for everything else, you know, and that, that was a pretty cool opportunity for me um, that I took it, and, you know, uh, it was it was good times. And one, the World Cup was mm -hmm. pretty awesome. It was in Brazil. Only my family is cheering for me, and everybody else was, <laughs> you know, obviously for Brazil. 
Uh, I was goalie. I was goalie of the tournament, uh, yep. which was pretty awesome as well. So, and I became a goalie of the year that year and the following year for the '77 uh, uh, league. Yep, I was reading that within your bio. You didn't, but you didn't just play in Italy. I mean, you played in the capital. You played at Lazio. I mean, that's. Uh, I guess it's safe to say you're you, you don't you don't like the Romanistas too much over at AS, huh? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of uh, rivalry there, but yeah, just just a little. That Derby della Capitale is uh, pretty rough when it comes yeah. to rivalries. Yeah, well, it's pretty rough, but you know, it, it's again, you get to do what you love. Uh, you mentioned it, and it's so true. Like we talk about this here for the blast. Like how many of you know the people that you know get to wake up in the morning, and go do what they dream as a kid, and uh, we're still here doing what we love. Yeah that's such a blessing you know so we have to do the best we can until we can because at some point we all have to stop and and then life won't be the same anymore because you won't have that feeling and you have to find another way to find you know the adrenaline the emotions that you feel when you play not being able to be on the locker room and, and to compete coaching is awesome you know and I coach college level and I coach youth and it's amazing, but it's, it's not the same feeling. You you hands tie, you know, you can give information, but it's the players that make the decision. And when you're on the field, you make that decision. So that is, it's so fun to do. And I wanted to keep doing as much as I can because I know I'm going to miss this tremendously when I decide to stop. Yeah, of course. And hopefully the wheels uh, don't come off for several more years because it is a joy watching you. The the, motiv the motivation, the ambition. I mean, you can see the fire in your eyes and the killer instinct, which is quite inspirational, even for somebody who just uh, sits up in a booth and talks about it on a microphone. <laughs> um, you mentioned you arrived to Baltimore, William. Like, it's – I mean, I've, I grew up in New York City in, in a very Brazilian neighborhood in a story. I'm just curious, like, how did you end up landing in the charm city of Baltimore, Maryland? Um, that's actually funny. I had a friend that I played with out there in Brazil that um, as I went to Italy, he came to U.S. and played college level here. And then he was playing indoor soccer. And one day we were talking and he, he showed me indoor soccer, which I never heard of before. And, and he said, I think this suits your game perfectly because you're good with your feet. You're so quick reactions and you really smart making decisions on the ball. And I think this game is going to be awesome for you. So fast forward, you know, um, um, the blast had two keepers and both of them are, were leaving this after the season. So Sagu decided to retire. Well, he moved back to Dallas and then Akira, which was the second keeper here that went to play outdoors. So they had no keepers and my friend, that was playing for Syrac Syracuse then uh, told me like, uh, you should go to Baltimore. So he emailed Danny Kelly, our coach uh, then, and then he watched me play in a World Cup that you just spot it up and he saw me and then he sent me a contract. So that's how I ended up in Baltimore. I did went to train a couple of days with my friends in, in Syracuse. So I got to know, and I met Nelly, I met Ubi, Toby, I, I met those guys when I was in Syracuse with my friend. But uh, I guess I wasn't good enough to play there. <laughs> I uh, Well, I've, you've obviously had a good enough career otherwise, but I th was it? I got to ask, I mean, you're going from Brazil to the northeast of the United States. Like, did you, how did you take to the weather? <laughs> I mean, I know you spent some time in Italy and Italy's not tropical, but, but still, like, it gets kind of cold in the northeast. Yeah, no, it's cold, and as a Brazilian, you you you're not happy with the weather here, obviously. But I was in Italy for so long, and where I was, it was really cold as well. So you get used to, not that you, you know you love it, but you get used to. I guess the hardest part is to to coach outdoors when it's really really cold. So that's you know a price to pay. But uh, we play indoors, so it's 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 good. No 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 complaints. So you jumped on, and correct me if I'm wrong, as a member of the Baltimore Blast uh, during 2012-2013. You obviously mentioned uh, how you became a part of this team, but coming in from like the outdoor world, and I'm always curious in asking this question, especially when it comes towards goalkeepers, how much of an adjustment was it going from outdoor, going from 7v7, going in and playing, having you know the game come off of the boards and that pace of, of play? How, how was the adjustment for you? Yeah, um, I, I think I adjust pretty quick. Um, but uh, I would like to say again, you know, I had Sagu calling me 
and and break it down stuff over the phone to me that was huge and i look up so many games i watched sagu i think entirely season the year before when they lost to me walk in the final um and it, and you try to learn it's a new game the bottom line is and i tell every goalie that that, that plays indoor they start in playing indoors or, or come to try out to the to baltimore or either other keepers you know like i talk to almost every goalie we have a good relationship um any keeper will make a save because we we've done this since we're young and you know you know how to be a shot stopper that's not the part of the game that you need to learn you have to learn the boards you have to learn the whole game new process like playing outdoor it's a ball coming you can die for everything indoors you key you really can't if you don't think the ball is going to be on the frame you can't really dive because if you dive it hits your back and goes in so you have to read like you got to teach yourself again things that you've done in different ways for 20 years now you have to all of a sudden change uh the game can be similar but it can be very different you have to learn how to be your set position change there's so many technical points here to make that i'm not going to go deeper because there's no point but there's a lot for you to change um that he, the question will be how quick can you adjust and and the pressure that you get you barely have a second to control the ball look up and find the next pass so it's always you know too fast but uh i think i i came very prepared when i came to baltimore i watched so many tapes and on my first year I said this to everybody, and I think get so at some point. But I watched every single game I played four times, hmm. and four times. First time is to watch my own performance. The second time was to watch my team performance. The third time was to watch the other team performance and the players' tendency, what they like to do, why they do this, and and what. And the fourth time is to go back on special teams. Um, so. I had to learn and I didn't have much time. And I remember DK, Danny Kelly used to say, to learn this game, you need 40 games or more to fully understand the game. Until then, you're just on the field. You're just playing. And it makes a lot of sense. I played my whole first year and I was MVP of the final and we won the championship. And on my second year, uh, towards to the playoffs, I really start to actually understand the game. And they made me think, no, I did not know anything before. I thought I did, but you didn't, you know? So it's a lot about knowledge. This game is about knowledge, a lot about knowledge. Playing with your brain before you play with your feet, it's the key. You mentioned winning the championship. And yeah, let's fast forward from 2012, 2013 to that very first title. Uh, talk to us about the feelings there having the ability and obviously Baltimore was one of the, if not the most successful MASL team in terms of titles won. Talk to us about the feelings of that season and what it felt like hoisting that Ron Newman cup. Uh, that was a rough year for us mentally because we came 2012, we won the championship. And then 2013, we lost the championship at home to Kansas city. And then on the following year, we lost the championship in Monterey against Monterey. So you're going to, you know, your fourth championship in a row, but you lost the last two. So we really felt, I, I really felt the pressure of, we have to win this. Otherwise we lost three times and it gets a bad reputation kind of thing, you know? So we're like, we got to win it. But we had no idea where we're stepping on. Uh, watching so many games in Sonora, it does not tell you how Sonora field actually was. Small and narrow. The problem was not the size of the arena, it was how the boards were shaping. That any shot will go inside of the box. Anywhere, any any glass that you hit, the ball will go to the box. And any other arena, even Baltimore Arena, which is a smaller arena right now, the boards are wider. So if you hit some boards, the ball will pop away or go into top of the box or sonora was so narrow like this then the corner kick will go in uh and we had no clue how to deal with that and you can see by the result of the the, the regular game it was 13 to 12 right if i'm not mistaken uh so we, it was crazy and you know as a brazilian 
South Americans fans are crazy. So <laughs> to play in, we got to the arena and there was a line uh, that would not end of fans that are trying to get in. There was a completely sold out arena. Don't know the capacity of that arena, but man, you could not talk to a person a feet away from you. And I love that environment. It is so good. I, you know, like I, I play away games, I think, better than I play home because I love like people insulting you. I love it. And it's part of the game. You know, they don't cross the line. They're not throwing anything at you, like talking. It's it's part of the game. It's cool. So it was a very tough Sonora team. was great. It was really good. And I thought Sonora actually played better away than actually home. Because they have fast guys, they had they they had so many good players. They are in those leagues still, you know. Um, it was a very good series, and we we took it uh, because they got a fourth foul in the fourth quarter when the game was tied, and we went to overtime, golden goal on power play, and Tony scored across from yeah. the right side diagonal to the left, and that was the golden goal game. Um, championship goal for us. You know, it was it was awesome. The celebration was pretty incredible. And the celebration didn't just end there because yeah, you hoist a Ron Newman there. You win three more, which puts you at four. Obviously, Baltimore Blast fans now are just reliving those memories. I mean, I watched those games very a couple of times with Panda and the Doctor just to kind of get our feet wet and listen and watch the history of the league. Those are some exciting games. But then we fast forward. To the craziest year hopefully we'll ever encounter in our lives, 2021. You came over to San Diego, and that was to talk about travel. You'd fly into San Diego for training on a Monday. Uh, there were, were no games at Pachanga Arena, so the team would go wherever the bubble was at the time. Um, and you obviously had to split time in, in, in between the pipes. Talk to us about what the travel was like for you and how that season played out. And uh, we'll talk about the finals momentarily, but I just want to hear how – how crazy was it going to San Diego and dealing with all the travel that you dealt with? Yeah, so when I, you know, when I heard that the the blast made the decision to to not play that year because we could not have fans, and obviously I was really bummer because I love to play. And then uh, I got a couple of different teams reaching out to me, and I was very thrilled about San Diego. To me, it was a franchise that was, you know, it's it so much history there. <clears throat> you look at Chris's dad. That yeah. is, uh, it's to me is the guy to look up for for all times. The best keeper you ever step on this, on this game and playing without gloves and oh my god, you know so much uh, history there. So I was really excited, but the logistic wasn't easy. I had other commitments here, so I had to actually fly back and forth uh, almost every week, uh, and that was pretty crazy. So I would fly on Sunday night or Monday morning to San Diego, practice then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then fly elsewhere because we could not have games in San Diego, play that game and then fly home on Saturday night or Sunday morning to be with my goalkeeper academy on Sunday afternoon, then fly back on the next day. So it was, uh, it was pretty insane, uh, but I knew that I had a good chance to win. The team was fantastic. If you look at single players in San Diego, you like it's on the paper is the best team is just putting two and two together and i i like to believe that me and marcio came with the experience and especially the, the, the help on the defense side of the game because san diego was a pretty offensively team and look at the talent they have but i think they got a better you know understanding of how to defend because at the end of the day defense is what wins championships um, so it was awesome. I have no complaints. Uh, man, I have so many good stories to talk about people in San Diego, uh, from top to bottom, you know, great organization that, you know, deserves to be where they are right now. You know, some fantastic guys like training staff, were like, oh, it's unbelievable. Like everybody's so nice. So I had a very good experience and obviously win the championship. It was, it was awesome. But I got to imagine, and just going back to the world of Baltimore, did it feel, I don't want to ask it as a yes or no question, how like how odd did it feel celebrating a championship with a team that wasn't your blast? 
I don't think it felt odd because, you know, first day you walk into, you look at the guys you always hated and you always played against, you know, I hate those guys. I look at Farber's like, if I could, I want to kill Farber. And then <laughs> he's my teammate. And then we became a best friends. Like, uh, you know, we talk very often and stuff, but so goes to other guys like Craig Child. Like I cannot stand the guy. Every time he shoots, he goes up or nine. You can't say, you know, and then you're like with them. And they're very nice. Uh, so I, I thought I we thought like going throughout the season, we clicked at the right time. And it was a great group. And to me, it was like, you know, put your your history aside. And I do love the Blast and everything they've done to me. And the fan base here is huge. I, I love the Blast fans. But I you had to put two and two together. Like San Diego really deserved the championship. And there was... It was good. It was good. Like, and I got to play with Marcio, uh, you know, another guy that I always hate, you know, like <laughs> playing against him. Like, you cannot like him. He's so annoying. And then he's <laughs> a nice guy on and off the field. Like, we really bond together. And I was happy that I played with him because I'm still ahead of him one championship. So he has to catch up. <laughs> that he does. Marcio, you heard mm -hmm. him. You heard William right here. You got to catch up, man. That, uh, I'll never forget that 2021 final because uh, I was in the booth calling it, <laughs> representing Ontario. So, uh, yeah, I, I remember that those final seconds in those couple of games very vividly. Uh, but we won't talk about that right now. We'll, we'll save that for off the camera. Um, back to Baltimore. The Blast have had an interesting season so far. You know, talk to us about your thoughts on the year. Um, you know, a little insight of the season. We started the season with six defenders injured. And you carry five defenders in the lineup. So you basically have no defenders to play. Um, unfortunately, Adrian is down for the season. And, you know, we had other guys with serious injuries. Obazi not capable to play, injury. And the other guys injured. Uh, Josh was injured. Diesel wasn't able. Like, <clears throat> when you don't have defenders, you're really going to struggle. Um, and that's what we did. And I'm not trying to find an excuse. I said that last week in the interview, like we got to find a way to win and not excuse. Uh, but those are facts. Well, I thought when we started to get guys back in shape and, and healthy, then we started to, to play better. Um, and I'm not talking about results. It's more about how is the team doing. You have to use the regular season as a test for your team and how do you outcome problems that you face as you face them. And I thought that we, you know, we did much better job. Uh, but we're still not there. Um, there's a lot room to grow. We call opportunities to grow. So when we review uh, games, you know, our coach is fantastic. Uh, what he he's doing here in in a short amount of time is it's notable, and uh, we players really appreciate. Um, I'm sure the fans are doing too. But um, take some time when you make changes. And I think we're in, in a decent path. Uh, I think we're going to be very competitive when the time will come. And if you've been around the league for a long time, you know that you can give us a chance to get to the playoffs because when we get to the playoffs, then it's a different uh, ball game. William, I, I just want to say thank you again for taking the time to speak with me. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed learning more about you and having this conversation. I mean, you've had an unbelievable career. From a broadcaster's perspective, it's amazing. From a fan's perspective, it's 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 unbelievable. And just wanted to say good luck to you the rest of this season. And, of course, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. And, you know, I just want to leave this out there uh, to everybody when you come to watch me home and away and it's not me but I want to be you know just directly to me I will give you a hundred percent there's no 99 percent so I will make mistakes I'll give up easy goals I'll make bad plays but I'll give everything I have every single day to make sure you guys had a good time coming watching us play anywhere so and you know very thankful for my teammates, which are the reason why I still play. I look them in the eyes and it just get me going. And, and, you know, very, very thankful to share the field with these guys day by day. And it's, uh, it's just uh, stories you're going to tell your family for the rest of your life. You know, like I was blessed enough to, to make history. I, I also, you know, I have, I think, Every single record in this league uh, goes against average. I have most shootouts. I have 
and and I think my name is going to be somewhere there. It's, it's good. It's going to be a special thing. So we love this game. We want people to continue to come to this game. We want to, arenas are full. We want games that are competitive. So we want more professional teams. We want a more professional things done by the league. We want to grow this and we want this all to be better for for the fans. So I want to thank you, uh, the fans, one more time. And thank you guys, broadcast, everybody. You guys do such a good job all over the league to, to bring that to the families that are home, you know, watching to, to make a better experience for them. Thank you for those words. Legendary words from a legendary player and a legendary human being. So once again, William, thank you. Folks, that's it for Insider. We'll see you all again on the YouTubes next week as we bring back another exciting guest. But once again, William, thank you for your time. And again, happy birthday. Thank you, guys.